All right, folks. So what I wanted to do here is a quick video on how you can improve the performance or range of your Baofeng UV5R radio. We have one right here. But before we do that, why don't you go grab yourself a nice cold one, come on back, and we'll get started. All right, so hopefully everybody made it back. While I was getting ready for this video, I thought about a couple of different things. And we're gonna do a modification, not so much to the radio, but more to the antenna. When you send and receive messages with a ham radio or any two-way radio for that matter, it's more about the antenna than it is the radio. I don't know if anybody wants to dispute that or not, but if you do, go ahead and put it in the comments below. So let's take a look at this UV5R and we can talk a little bit about what we can do to increase the performance. I was researching this particular topic and I learned about something called a counterpoise. Anyhow, when you have a radio like this, it doesn't ground with the earth, right? So you have a little bit of a compromise there. So you can add something called a counterpoise. And I was able to make this particular counterpoise for probably about 90 cents, probably less than that, with, with spare parts that I had around the house. Now the purpose of a counterpoise is to simulate a ground plane or to create a ground plane in the event that you actually can't ground your negative charge or your, your, your radio to, to the earth. Um, this may be because you have an antenna on the roof, roof of your house or your building or something like that, or it could be that you're using a hand talkie and there is no ground, um, or it, it could be that you have your station set up in an area with rocky soil. So anyhow, what I did for two meter band is I made this uh, it's basically about a 19 and a half inch piece of cord cable uh, with a connector heated on to the end of it. And uh, the, I came up with this measurement. It's just barely over 19 and a half inches because you take two meter and then you divide it by four and then you do, and then you convert that over to, uh, I guess you would call it the non-metric system. And what you come up with is just over 19 and a half inches. I think it's 19.65 or something like that. So I went ahead and I made this. Now I'm gonna go ahead and show you how we attach it to the radio. So when you go ahead and you attach this to the radio, one of the things that you wanna do is you wanna attach it to the negative portion of your antenna. With these SMA connectors, the point inside is the positive and the outside is the negative. But when I looked at this parts that I had, I said, well, that's not gonna fit on there. So how am I gonna do that? Plus I didn't want anything on this uh, SMA connector that could potentially booger it up or mess up the threading or anything like that. So what I did is I got my voltmeter out and then I turned it to this wave feature. I don't know if you can see that right there. And uh, what that does is it measures continuity. When I say wave, it kind of looks like a wave to me. I don't know if that's true for everybody. So anyhow, when I have that on, what I can do real quick to test my, my multimeter to make sure that I have continuity is touch the two probes together. When you hear that sound, you have continuity. So we want to test the continuity of this battery, I'm sorry, of this, this radio. What I'll do is I'll place one probe on the negative battery and then one on what I believe to be the negative of the radio. By hearing that noise, it tells me there's continuity there. So I got to wondering, do I have to connect it to this SMA adapter or can I connect it somewhere else? So what I want to do is I want to measure continuity, and there you go, to that back screw. And basically what continuity means is there's an electrical connection between two points on, I guess device is the right word. So anyhow, let's come back and I'll show you how I'm going to connect it. Okay, before I connect this, you could put this on a radio other than a UV5R. You could put it on something like this, which is another Baofeng radio, or you could put it on an FT60, where my favorite radio, I love this thing, is the uh, Yaesu VX3. Just love this radio. All right, so let's go ahead and show you how I'm going to do this. Take a screwdriver. Take one of the pocket clip screws out. I don't have a pocket clip mounted on this radio. I do have some mounted on others. But for this one, I don't find it necessary.
and I go ahead and just mount it on like that. And this creates a ground plane that'll work with my antenna to increase both RX and TX on this particular radio. Now one of the things that you can do is you can create ground planes for every band for which your radio operates. In this case, it's 2 meters and 70 centimeters. You'll just need to do the math and create a ground plane. And what you can, these are also called rat tails if you want to research it a little bit. But when you go ahead and you turn your radio on, I call this one Fang 2. I got Fang 1, Fang 2, Blue Fang, and, and Red Fang. What I can do now is play around with various frequencies. There are some people on YouTube that claim these things don't work at all. And there's other people that claim that they work great. Um, adding 12 decibels of gain to your antenna. While I don't necessarily believe that to be true, one or two decibels of gain is a good thing. And uh, for less than a buck, you can go ahead and make a rat tail like this. You can connect it to your radio and potentially increase your performance. I played around with this and I think I noticed a difference. But at the same time, when I move two or three feet over to the left or right, my radio performs better. But anyhow, in the event of a SHTF or prepper situation, it, w it makes sense to me to have something like this in your bag of tricks. Anyhow, that's it. Thanks, everybody.